Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of nearly 300,000 PepsiCo associates from around the world, I wish you all a very, very good morning. You know, it's a delight to be here in this outstanding event and this lovely city of Stockholm. But above all, it's really an honor for me to be having this opportunity to talk to so many experts and so many organizations who are dedicated to the cause of food and water security, two of the biggest challenges that face our world today. The reason why I am here is because PepsiCo firmly believes that there is nothing more important than social and environmental sustainability for the future and health of our communities, and equally for the future and health of our growth, of our economies, and of our businesses. And there is nothing which is more central to this equation than water. We are committed to being a part of the solution, and we are passionate about it. At PepsiCo, we call this performance with purpose. Now, having said that, I have to say I feel really humble because my personal knowledge of this field is really very limited compared to most of you in this hall today. So what I'm going to share is two of my personal experiences. And the first one is about a small place in a western part of India called Python, which I visited four years back. Water in Python was increasingly scarce. Their wells had dried up. The lands and the fields were parched. In fact, they were limited and reduced to growing only one crop a year down from their customary two, as a result of which the income almost halved. The women and children had to spend over an hour walking to fetch water every single day. Peyton, indeed, was going through a very, very tough time. Now, an NGO, ADI, analyzed that actually the village was getting adequate rainfall. What was happening was that the water was getting washed away through the natural three rivulets that there existed in the area without recharging the aquifers. So the solution in this case was disarmingly simple. 13 check dams were built by ADI in partnership with the local municipality. Rainwater was channelized into the 100-odd wells, and a self-help group was established to ensure that the community maintains this new infrastructure. The village is in the vicinity of one of our manufacturing plants in Python, and we, as PepsiCo, led the initiative under a goal of ensuring that all our plants' neighboring uh, communities are water sufficient. But when I visited Peyton nine months later, nine short months later, I was absolutely stunned. The villagers were brimming with joy. The wells, as they showed me, had water in them. The aquifers were being recharged. The same field which was arid nine months ago was today a rose plantation, and the farmer very proudly told me that he was earning an additional 9,000 rupees a month from it. The children were more regular at school. And a year later, for the first time in six years, the Peyton farmers sowed their second crop. Just before I came to Stockholm, I made it a point to check with our India team, and I was really happy to hear that Peyton is still growing strong. Arguably, a life-changing initiative at a total cost of less than $100, much less than $10 per person. I have to tell you, experiencing Peyton firsthand changed my life for sure. I was amazed that so little at times could transform so much, and indeed in such a short period of time. It has personally 
been one of my most gratifying experiences that I've ever had, and I'll always cherish that look of hope and optimism on the faces of the people in Python. The second story is set in the paddy fields of uh, the Punjab, also in India. Now, you might be wondering why this person from PepsiCo is talking about paddy fields. Well, while most of you better know us for our snacks and beverages, the reality is that we are one of the larger agricultural companies across the world as well. A lot of our products depend upon agricultural raw material. PepsiCo grows or sources millions of tons of fruits and vegetables across, from across the world. Uh, four million tons, in fact, for our Lay's brand of potato chips, three million tons of oranges and other fruits and vegetables for Tropicana, Sobe, and Naked Juice, and 600,000 tons of oats for Quaker. Now, of course, most of you know that rice happens to be one of the largest consumers of water. In India, the number is an astronomical 3,000 liters for every kilogram of rice produced. And India, of course, happens to be one of the top producers of rice as well. That's right, 3,000. Well, to cut a long story short, our scientists, with support from the International Rice Research Institute, as well as the Punjab Agricultural University, introduced a new technique called direct seeding for rice, DSR, which eliminated the need to flood the fields, saved over 30% of water consumed, reduced greenhouse gases to the extent of 70%, and improved the profitability of the farmer because of low labor costs. Today, I'm happy to say that DSR has been adopted in seven states across the country, but what I'm most excited about is the size of the price. It is indeed huge. If India, the one country, adopts this technique across half of its paddy cultivation, the country will actually save more water than all industry combined consumes today. Now this and several other within the fence as well as community initiatives enabled us to be the first beverage business in the world actually to achieve positive water balance. In other words, replenish more water than we consume. Now today, we follow a global integrated approach on water across a very wide spectrum that includes conservation in our direct operations, supply chain and watersheds, provision of safe water to communities which need it most, and importantly, advocacy to help find lasting solutions to the crises that we face. But each one of our initiatives across different parts of the world has one critical common element. They are all powered by great partnerships with the likes of the Columbia University Earth Institute, Water.org, the Safe Water Network, the Inter-American Development Bank, and many, many more experts who are very fortunate to work with. And sometimes, it even means working with our competitors. For example, we joined forces with IFC and 12 other organizations, some of, other, some of whom were other food and beverage companies, uh, along with the World Economic Forum, to launch WRG, the Water Resource Group, whose mission is to share and deploy best practices at the invitation of governments in regions where unique solutions and approaches like direct seeding make sense. Now, I'd like to share five key takeaways from our experiences on water over the years with you. The first, the interconnectivity of water. I have just found it simply amazing, not only with food, but talk about energy, sanitation, education, health, female empowerment. Water plays an absolutely key role in each one of them, and that is why it may, that's what makes it one of the most complex subjects to handle, one where collaboration is absolutely paramount. Second, 
Water scarcity is indeed debilitating. But fortunately, some or many of the solutions are not overly complex or overly expensive. And there are several pools of excellence, innovative solutions, success stories across the world. In fact, I'm eagerly awaiting to look and looking forward to learning about many more such during this World Water Week. But I dare say the impact of these so far has not been sufficient to turn the tide. The task ahead of us, I believe, is to figure out how to transform these pools of excellence into truly an ocean of positive change. The third, leveraging partnerships, as many of the earlier speakers talked about, is truly all powerful. In our case, I can certainly tell you, there is no question that we would not have been able to do a fraction of what PepsiCo has achieved in water if it were not for the expertise provided by our water partners, if it were not for the support by the local governments, if it were not for the participation of the local community. But this power is woefully under leveraged in our world even today. There are too many silos, too many bureaucratic hurdles, and unfortunately at times too much suspicion which prevents organizations and governments from joining hands and making swifter progress on a burning platform of food and water security. We clearly have a monumental task at hand. And as all of you go to the week ahead, I do have one message, a request to you to think about who your organization should be forging partnerships with to make even greater progress, to make a real difference even if it means entering uncomfortable partnerships, even if it means taking a leap of faith, even if we do not agree on everything, we must be willing to look at the person in the seat on the right and the seat of the left and find common ground. Fourth, being a person from the business world, the one thing I've been taught my entire working life is that it is action that yields results. And in the case of water and food security too, I believe we need to borrow a phrase to just do it. In, the case, in this case, let's not wait for the perfect solution or 100% funding or a totally risk-free strategy. These unfortunately do not exist most of the time in the real world. We have no time to lose, we all understand that, and if we have the 80-20, or I dare say, a 70-30 solution, it's time for action, even if it means piloting an initiative. And my fifth and last takeaway is that the business world is undertapped. Perhaps not under, untapped, but definitely undertapped, and therein lies a significant opportunity. Speaking on behalf of business across the world, big and small, my message today is that we are keen, we are willing, and we are able. Increasingly, business is reaching the conclusion that social and environmental sustainability are key drivers of long-term financial success. We cannot sustain business for the long term if we do not earn and keep a license to operate. Performance with purpose. If I were to try to sum up these five key takeaways into one word, well, firstly, that'd be a tough thing to do. Uh, but I think the word would be water net. I believe what we need is a water net. Yes, it does resonate or rhyme with internet for a reason. What we can do to water what WaterNet can do to water is what the internet has done to our daily lives, which can build on the interconnectivity of water, which can help spawn thousands of partnerships, which can help enable sharing of ideas, innovations, successes, which can drive us through on a greater bias for action, which can hopefully be a catalyst of big, positive change. 
I'd like to end uh, on an optimistic note. And I'd like you to imagine a world, a better world. I want you to imagine a world where in the space of one lifetime, nearly a billion people are lifted out of poverty. Imagine a world where we have reduced child mortality down to one third of what it used to be. Imagine a time when life expectancy increases by as much as one third. And imagine a world where the average human being earns three times what she used to. Was that tough to imagine? Is that a bar too high? Are those milestones too tough to cross? Of course not. As many of you very well know, I'm actually talking about the world we are living in today, right here. Every one of these remarkable leaps has happened in the course of our lifetime. And I have not even talked about the numerous life-changing technological advances made within the same period that we have all enjoyed in our lives. My friends, there is absolutely no question that we are fortunate to be living in an age of incredible promise. And these amazing accomplishments give me confidence that we can indeed turn the tide on food and water security. Now, we are all familiar with the UN's estimate that two-thirds of the world's population is likely not to have enough water by 2025 if current trends continue. Well, I think in this case, even the UN would love to see the estimate proven wrong. And by joining hands together and powered by the water net, I am sure we can. At PepsiCo, we are committed to being part of this journey. Thank you.